Yo, welcome everybody. Welcome back to the Saturday morning 3D live stream. And today, this Saturday, is the first Saturday that we're getting together and working on our 3D community challenge renders together. The Moving Meditation 3D Challenge. This is it, this is stream number one. And it is not too late to join this challenge. If y'all don't know what's going on, we're doing a 3D challenge. We're gonna be combining all of the submissions together into one epic martial arts mega montage. We got giveaways, we got prizes, uh, Rococo suits, we got kit bash kits, we got Wacom tablets, we got uh, Da Vinci Resolve Studio perpetual licenses to give away. Um, that's just, those are the top five prizes. Um, we're also giving away some Kit Bash exclusive discount codes on every single one of the streams moving forward, including this stream right here. So keep your ears peeled for them codes. Uh, what are we doing on this stream? Well, like I said, we're working on our art. We're all working on our art together for this challenge. And if you don't know what the challenge is, um, everybody gets a project file. It's the same project file, but you can pull any animation you want from the provided animations. They're all like Tai Chi, Kung Fu uh, animations. And we're gonna piece them all together. They're all, they're gonna flow together. It's gonna be amazing. And I'm gonna be working on my submission. I'm starting my submission today. Um, I've been trying to figure out the, the right idea. A lot of us are trying to figure out those ideas. Um, and I'm just getting started. So it's not too late. There's a link. There's a discord link in the description below If you want to join us if you want to get working, it's not too late You're gonna go to that discord. It's gonna take you there and it's gonna give you the download files It's gonna be the project files. You're gonna get the FAQs. You're gonna get uh, the rules all that stuff You're gonna get access to the whole community. It's all free um, to help you out got a lot of questions to be answered a lot of answers for your questions What else so I'll be I'm gonna be in Unreal 5 today um, and I'm just gonna kind of build out my scene. The hardest part is finding a character, uh, connecting the, it's not hard to connect the character. You just gotta figure out how to do it. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out how to do it myself. I know we all are trying to figure out how to do that. What else? Um, so I'm gonna be building out the scene in Unreal 5 on the stream today. So before we hop in, y'all know how we do this. We got some stream sponsors. So I'm gonna throw it to the sponsor real quick. Hang tight, um, got some good info for you on some cybersecurity. And then we're gonna be back and I'm gonna walk you through my ideas. I'm gonna show you how I used AI art to generate some ideas and where how that's gonna guide me into creating my art here on the stream today. All right, so back in two minutes. Don't move your butts, see you soon. About a year and a half ago, a very good friend of mine was the target of identity theft. His credit score dropped more than 100 points which prevented him from refinancing this house, which cost him hundreds of dollars every single month. And he was beyond stressed for the couple months it took to get everything straightened out. Statistically, if you're in a room of 13 people, two of those people will be the target of identity theft within the year. So I am happy to talk to you guys about Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura is an identity theft protection service at its core. They live monitor fraud cases, provide you with a VPN for protected browsing, help with password management, and offer antivirus software all packed into one easy to use application. Aura will live monitor the dark web to look out for your passwords, email addresses, and social security numbers, and we'll send you a quick alert to your profile. As soon as I signed up, I had 27 unique password and email leaks. And I found it pretty satisfying to go through them all, lock them down, and build up your personal security fortress. One of the things that helped my buddy lock down his identity was freezing his credit. That way you have an added layer of protection, requiring verification for anyone trying to open a line of credit in your name. And Aura can help you do this efficiently and easily. The service is awesome. It does so many things. It actually reaches out to a bunch of telemarketing companies to remove your info from their list. So that means way less spam calls. Aura is offering y'all a two week free trial. By clicking the link in the description below, you're not only helping myself and the channel, but are taking the necessary steps to protect and lock down your digital identity. Yeah, yeah boy. Um, it's actually a really cool service. Legit is addicting to lock down all your stuff and be on top of, of everything, so. It's pretty sweet. Definitely click that link in the description if you guys are trying to help out the channel here. Um, and, it's, and it's helpful for y'all. I gotta say, um, 
something very special happened on my actual birthday, like a week ago. Uh, at my birthday dinner, this channel hit a million subscribers, which is freaking nuts. Oh my God. I have been at it since 2006. That's like 16 years of this channel, my God. I started out during doing um, Grand Theft Auto stunt videos. I would film like my bike stunts in Grand Theft Auto on my PSP and edit it in Windows Movie Maker. I posted it on MySpace and I was like, my buddy told me about YouTube and he was like, dude, you should post it on YouTube. So I started posting the Grand Theft Auto stunt videos on YouTube and then it got to the point where I was like, um, okay, what, well, what can I do from here? You know, I started doing tutorials actually. I started, and they're on this channel. You can go back. This, th there's a lot of history on this channel. Like I, I was on a cruise one time and I logged into a public computer and I stayed logged into that public computer when I was like a kid and they, they wiped all my videos. They cleared everything. I had a video that was like at a million views. It was like of a 3d minigun, just displaying a minigun that I made in Cinema 4D. And uh, the channel got wiped and I was like, man, this gives me an opportunity to start fresh and start new and, and, and really make the things on this channel the best they can be. So then I started doing tutorials that you can watch now on this channel if you go way back, uh, After Effects tutorials um, and whatnot. And uh, started doing short films and started doing short films for different video games like the Sleeping Dogs video. Uh, I mean, Cardboard Warfare was before that. Um, yeah, and then got into like Wolfenstein, Dead Island, doing videos for their games. And then I took a six year hiatus, six years, cause I was at Rocket Jump and then I went to Corridor and I was at three years at each of them. And, and y'all probably know at this point, I, I left Corridor to come back here to work on my channel and to build it back up. And when I came back, it was at like 350,000 subscribers about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. And now we're at a million, my goodness. <laughs> Thank you all so much for, for, for hanging out with me and doing this with me. Like every single week, it's been amazing. We've done such cool stuff together and we're still doing cool stuff. We're doing this challenge right now and we're doing it together. That's the best part is we're doing this together. So thank you guys. Thank you everyone so much for, for, for supporting me over the years and, and watching my videos and being here for a long, long time. So thank you. Let's get into the art, shall we? Let's get into the art. All right. So this is my pure ref reference board, right? This is the art that I'm using to guide my art whoop, in Unreal Engine 5 um, along. And I'm talk about this a little bit. So here's my idea. Here's the idea, right? I want to have a character in some sort of like blank space, like a lab of some sort, you know, um, sitting in a chair in the middle of the room and they're strapped up to like VR stuff almost, right? Kind of like this. And it's a feeble old man, a little, definitely a feeble old man. And, you know, this is another great example. This is from Ash, this is Ash Thorpe. One of my favorite, oh my God, one of my favorite 3D artists. So good. And they're strapped up to this, right? And they sit up out of their chair and they have all these wires hanging from their head, right? And they, as they raise their arms into the starting pose that y'all are very familiar with, the, the room around them like flickers and blinks and transports them, digitally transports them, do, 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 like kind of like the matrix, to a rooftop. Um, there's a place called the Kowloon Walled City and I think they tore it down in 95. It was in Hong Kong. It was the most densely packed place in the world at the time, I believe. It was basically some slums. It was some slums and uh, but the vibes were off the charts and that's kind of what, that's the environment that I want to build. I'm kind of doing two environments. Yes, I know, I said, last challenge I was like, I'm biting off more than I can chew on the last challenge. Oh no, I'm not gonna do it again. I have a plan for that, 
first and foremost, I got to focus on what's important, and that is justifying every single one of these renders that are going to come before this one, okay? Or come after this one. So the idea is that, like, this character has his headset, and then the room will flicker and blink and turn into an environment. And I'm going to focus on this scene first, because that is what's needed to kind of pass the ball off to all the other renders in the montages. And then when it comes time for me to create an environment, because I do want to create an environment, yeah, an environment of my own, I'm going to base it off this kind of rooftop scene. I think it'll be pretty darn simple. I'll probably get some kitbash buildings, pop them into the background like you see here, get this kind of early morning foggy light, and just make a pretty simple foreground with some puddles, on a rooftop with some like, uh, you know, some trash, some bottles, some radar dishes, some antennas, that kind of stuff. And beyond that, I'm just going to mess with some cloth physics. I think I'm going to do it in C4D. I'm going to sim it in C4D because they got their new cloth system looking real nice. And then I'm going to bring that back into Unreal Engine. I'm finishing everything in Unreal Engine because I'm trying to put my points into Unreal Engine. It's an awesome program. I love it. And I love being able to just iterate quickly and make really cool scenes. From, from my brain to the screen as quick as possible. Um, so thanks again, everybody. We got 1,100 people in here. I better start making some art, huh? I'm gonna preface this for y'all right now. I'm prefacing this for you guys. <laughs> I kinda have a direction. I kinda have a direction. You heard me talk it out, but we'll see. We're in it, y'all. This ain't a pop. This isn't. This isn't a polished tutorial. I'm gonna be making mistakes left and right, but I'm gonna be learning <laughs> through my failures. I will learn, and that's how we do it on this channel. We gotta learn and we gotta grow, and we're doing it together. Y'all are working on your scenes. I'm working on my scene. If you guys are in the chat right now, and you're working on your submission, give me a thumbs up. I want to see it. I want to see them thumbs, y'all. Also, I don't know if y'all noticed, but maybe you noticed, we got a new microphone set up. Deity Mics, shout out to Deity Microphones. It's the, it's the sister company of Aperture who makes the lights. Big fan of them. Uh, we got a little shotgun mic right up in here, so hopefully it's sounding good. Also, we got we got our little, our buddy, <laughs> our little buddy. <laughs> we got the stream producer himself right up here. Soto, we wanna say hello. Whoa, surprise, what a new cool feature that I can talk to you guys directly. Hello. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah. So Soda might be popping in from time to time, saying hello. Sorry for calling you a little buddy. I will never forgive you. How could you do this to me on live? Nah. <laughs> but look at you, it's like a little you know, little buddy just up here, you know, chill. Little right? friend, yeah. All right, all right, let's get back to it. We got thumbs. We got a lot of thumbs, y'all. Oh, thumbs down. Eds, why? Why, my friend? I believe in you. Some of you are like, oh, can I can I join this challenge or not can I, sorry. I messed that up. Let me restart. Some of you guys are like, oh, I can't join the challenge because I'm not good enough. You know what? That is some malarkey, okay? Y'all can do it. People learned how to use Blender for these challenges and they were in the montages. So this is the perfect time to learn. What are you guys talking about? If you if you have any interest in learning 3D, literally this is the time to do it. Download freaking Blender right now. Download Unreal Engine right now. Hop in, it's so much fun. Um, okay, I'm getting my chair and we're doing this. Oh. Yeah. Alrighty. Whew. I did it. Alright, that was the intro. We got the brand segment in. We got the talking points. We got the announcements. I think I can relax now. <laughs> These streams are always like, always stressful at first. At first. They're always stressful. I'm always nervous beforehand. You know, it's like anytime I was going to run the mile, uh, in middle school, every Friday we had to run the mile. Oh my God, I was so anxious and so stressed out every Friday. Mm. But as soon as I ran, it was on and like afterwards is the best. So that's why I'm always getting pizza after these dang streams. 
I'm gonna move my PRF board over to the right side. I might bring it in from time to time um, if I need to really talk something out. But here, yeah, here's what I'm specifically trying to do. So right now I kind of have this set up. Um, I would love to get a roof going. I think building out a roof would be sweet. So that's probably on my list. Um, this is the Donald Glover, this is America music video. I'm using this for reference. Um, nice warehouse scene. And it reminded me of Inception. I was like, weren't they tapping in in like a warehouse as well? So I think it'd be cooler to build out like a, a mix between a warehouse and a room like this. So maybe the Dolly Inn starts on something looking like this, or rather like this. The Dolly Inn starts here. And when we get in, it's like more produced, right? It's kind of like a more of a look like this. And this is another example of like, um, this is a Chemical Brothers music video. If you've never seen this music video, oh my God. This is one of the best music videos of all time. Um, but I love this environment. This environment might be the ideal perfect environment because it's the right size. I love these hanging lights up here. So I might try and go to like make make some moves in this direction. Um, and then kind of fill it out and mix, mix these kind of two vibes here some way, somehow. So let's begin. All right, so I got this psych. It's called a psych. This thing right here is called a psych. It is spelled like that. C-Y-C, psych. And it is used to kind of get that infinite background kind of feel. Usually they're not reflective like mine. Usually they're just matte. If I hop into my camera, right click. Oh, you see, it's not available. And I think that's a bug. It's because I changed my layout and when I change it back, it doesn't do it. So you need to find the actual camera. You can hit G to show and hide your stuff. And we'll pilot it. We can also hit the cinematic viewport and I will need to open up my actual sequence. So we'll open the content drawer. I'll go to my sequences and we'll open up the sequence here. It's not doing anything because we're not in the camera. We gotta click the little camera and then we're in, okay? All right, I'm gonna move my sequencer over to the other screen. Awesome. And I also have my materials. So let's go to materials. I made some master materials. Um, we have a basic material instance. I can adjust this here, the roughness. We can just take the specular down to zero. And that kind of gives you more of that infinite space look. The lighting is what's making it look not infinite right now. It needs to be more evenly lit across every single area of this thing. Um, but where do I start? So many places to start. I'm going to go back to my default view here. Hmm, okay, I think first, I'm gonna try and get to that 80% mark by the end of the stream. That's my goal. This is just in a room. I made this with a bunch of walls that come with the uh, starter content. All right, so you have your, let's see, your starter content architecture and you got all your walls and stuff. So that's what I'm using. And I could even turn off the the lighting here. Let's see, I can turn off my directional light. And inside we have our scene. So that's how I'm doing that. Let's see, we can 
drop this below the floor. I'm doing small little things that don't really matter at this point. I need to I need to shape up. You can hide this floor too. I'm just gonna delete it. All right. Let's see about building out that warehouse. Oh, we got some Z fighting going on. Ah, uh, I see. It's just because this texture is this, it's overlaying on that as well. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and hide our psych. We have our room here. It's all grouped. Control shift G should ungroup it all. And I'm just gonna open this up a little bit wider. And I'm gonna grab all these walls actually. And open this up. I'm just eyeballing it. Spacebar will toggle between your position, rotation, and scale gizmos. All right, so we got our warehouse. We got our character. Let's see what it looks like in our camera. Oh, we need to go a little further. And we can pin that camera by finding it in our outliner on the right here, selecting it and just hitting this little boop, little pin. That way we know how far we got to go. Now I might mention this one more time, but them kit bash discount codes, all right? I, you know, we talked about them. And we're gonna have one per stream. But today's exclusive, stream exclusive kit bash code. If y'all trying to get some kit bash tools, if you don't know, if you don't know what kit bash is, they make a bunch of like themed kits um, of different skyscrapers, buildings, props, um, with a whole bunch of different themes. They're super cool. We got a link in the description, kitbash3d.com. And we, oh, we got kitbash in the house too. What's up? Yo. So y'all, if y'all trying to get them kitbash kits, we got you a 20% off for this stream only. If you use the code moving20, moving20. They're definitely gonna help you build out your scene. I know that they are also one of the sponsors for the challenge as well. Um, so the top 100 artists making it into the top 100 montage all get a kit bat kish, uh, woo, a kit bat, a, goodness, a kit, a kit bash 3D kit of their choice. So that's 100 kits out to all top 100 artists, one of one each of your of their choice, and the top five artists get three kits of their choice. Heck yeah. All right, I'll pin that message for y'all. Feel, feel free to feel free to use it. Feel free to take advantage. Um, let's see. All right, let's get this roof up. We're gonna get all these up. I'm gonna shift click all this stuff, group it and move it all up at once. 
Control G will group. Let's get that roof up there. And then let's go ahead and shift click all these guys. I made it out of six panels. Where are you? There you are. Space bar again. We'll cycle between <gasps> we'll cycle between your position rotation and scale gizmos. And we'll take our lights, because we have some lights in here. If you hit G, that's gonna show and hide all your stuff. Alright, so let's take these lights. Shift click all these guys. Let's get rid of that one. I don't know why that one's being weird. Shift click all these. Actually, I know why. Because should be because the light is set to these lights are set to stationary. They should all be set to movable. That way we get that real-time feedback. We don't have to bake any lighting, none of that nonsense. I ain't trying to bake lighting today. But let's grab all these rec lights. We can move them up. Very nice. And we can move them let's see we can duplicate by holding alt yeah we'll get i'll get some there and we'll hold alt and we'll get some over here and i'm gonna go ahead and duplicate these out to the back of the room as well I'm holding right click and I'm using W, A, S, and D, just like you're in a first person shooter, to move around the scene. I think it's the best way to navigate a 3D scene. And I wish every program would adopt this method because it's, it's so easy, it's the best. I know the only other program I know that does this, um, granted I haven't used every single program in the world, so I'm sure there might be more, but I know Rococo Studio um allows you to navigate like that as well we can take all those lights if you want and we can make sure they're in one folder. jumping in real quick to say you can do it in blender too but it doesn't have a hotkey by default so if you go to view and then i think it's fly or walk navigation i don't remember one which one if you give it a hotkey you can do it in blender as well heck yeah do you use it no, not much. Only <laughs> to like move my camera, like my rendering camera. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Navigating this way is great. All right. So. All right. We have our scene. It's generally kind of framed up. We have our warehouse. So what we can do is think about, I don't want to think about how this is going to be shown, like how much we're going to see, because I don't want to fill out anything that we're not really going to see. And if I had a better direction of, of, of a very specific, clear direction of where I was going with this, I would have that answer. And I should have that. It's just, you know, things are busy, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it. I'm going to say it. Ain't no excuse. Got to run it through. I got to run this channel somehow, right? So there's a lot of work to be done on the channel. I wish I had all the time to spend on the art. I'd be a little further ahead, um, but it's okay. We're gonna get there. We are gonna get there. So if you can have a clear idea of where you wanna go, um, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna blend this kind of setup, right? This kind of setup without all the stuff because that would take eons with this kind of setup. And I think the best way to do it is like with a roof. I think no matter what, it's gonna there's gonna be a roof like this. So let me just get into creating a roof. I'll start there and then we can figure out what else is gonna be seen. So this is a great example of a roof. This is also another really good example of an industrial style roof. Here is another great example of an industrial style roof. Uh, this is America music video. Once again, this is a great example of an industrial style roof. So I think it's just a lot of blocks, pillars, concrete, that kind of stuff. And I think, 
I got the perfect thing for that because I have a bunch of concrete materials and textures. And it looks like there's rows of like support beams going across. So I think I'm going to try and block some of that stuff in and then get some pipes running along with some lights hanging and see how that vibe feels. I think it could look pretty sweet. So let me get out of the camera. Let me set my roof up here and then I can lower it as needed, right? So there's a number of ways we can do this. We can hop into Quixel Bridge, top left up here. We can hop in and we can start pulling our assets here, 3D assets. Um, we can go for industrial. We can go for construction and probably somewhere in here we will find some things that will help us. Um, these are all really tiny. I know that there's like some good concrete stuff. Hardware mining railway. Let's see, hardware. That's like stuff. These bolts, uh, or not bolts, these aren't bolts, these are pipes. These pipes are gonna be real handy. I know we'll need some of those. So what I'll do is actually I'll go through and I'll start favoriting things. And before I favorite things, I'll make sure my favorites are clear. So I'll go to my 3D assets and make sure all of this. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Cause I need those. This is exactly what I need. This is similar to what we built a couple streams ago. Um, this is great. I'm just going to bring some of these in cause these are totally, totally what we need. That's why I love favoriting stuff. 3D assets. And let's hit up Dark Hero's super chat here while I transfer these items over. Let me get them, let me get that transfer going first. I wanna download these things. Download, 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 download. Yep. I wanna download them nanites and hit download. All right, Dark Hero, you got a question or a request of some sort or something. Let me turn up this ISO. Uh, quick question, when opening the Unreal template, the camera isn't in the scene. Do I need to add a new one or no? Okay, the camera should be in the scene. Um, I'm trying to remember what I had to do to get the camera or show the camera, because I think I'm I think I'm understanding what you're talking about. Um I think a couple people might have that question as well. So what I can do is actually let me just open up. Let's see here. Let's open up the starter file and see what we can see. Project files, Unreal Engine. I got you guys. Okay. So if I just open this up, what do you see? All right, this is what I see. I see a camera here. So if you're not seeing that camera, then that's interesting. We can right click it and pilot it. What you're not seeing is a character, the stand-in mannequin. This stand-in mannequin is here. It's just not linked to a static mesh. So that is, that's on me, y'all. I take full responsibility for this. I set this project file up myself. So you just gotta go to mesh and you gotta drop that mannequin into the, the static mesh on the mannequin. And, and there you go. And if you open up your sequence, what up? You should have your scene all right here. Um, so you don't see the camera. That's interesting because my camera is right here. I, maybe you're in like, a different version or something. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know, that could be the case. But, yeah, I don't know, like, the the Discord is great for that because you can get answers to a bunch of questions. Um, you know, hit up that Discord, hit up that community. I'm sure you got questions, they got answers. We're all figuring it out together, but you should be seeing this. You should be seeing this. Uh, hey, Easy Sonics, great, great, great suggestion. 90% of the Unreal issues are fixed with updating Unreal to the latest version. Try that first. I am on the latest version of Unreal, so maybe consider switching to that latest version. All right. Let us return. Where are you at? Yes, we will save. Okay, back in. All right, so we want them pillars and stuff. I think we got them from Quixel. So that made a mega scans folder. Surfaces. Oh no, 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 no. That did not happen yet because we still need to. What? Not downloaded. Crazy. Well, download we shall. Are we allowed to rotate, move the character rig? <sighs> Read the FAQs. Read the rules. Read the rules. No, you cannot. You cannot move the character around the scene. You can't rotate them around the scene. You know why? Because at the beginning of this live stream, there was a, it's also in the announcement video, there was a video showing a couple different test animations, test scenes, and it cuts very seamlessly between them. The only reason it's cutting seamlessly between them is because you don't move the character. You don't rotate the character around. They all start like this, right? Uh, they all start like this, and they should all end like this. If you start moving your character around, it's gonna—it's not gonna make the montage. It's gonna be cut from the montage. So do not get banished from these montages, y'all. Follow them rules, and please read them carefully. The moderators only have so much moderator juice. Um, Cause once their moderator meter is empty, who knows what will happen. <laughs> Um, Cyber, what about something, them holding something in their hands? G read the FAQs. Read the rules, read the previous questions. It's, <laughs> it's on the Discord, it's easy. You just go there and read it. <laughs> read the rules. The rules and FAQs. Read them. Yeah. Okay, let's export this stuff. Export to Nanite. I want to export all of these mugs to Nanite, so I'm just going to hit add. And they should populate into our scene automatically. If we close this, then we should have, oh yeah, all these like pillars and stuff. Yes, it needs to compute. Yeah, y'all don't want to see them moderator meters on empty. That is not a good sight. Yes, this is what I need. This is what I need. Bringing in all the goods because this is what I need. Mm. Bringing in all them goods. This is what I need. Yes, yes. All right. Uh, get out. Don't want to see you anymore. I'm tired of you. Okay, so I am just gonna get, the, get these pillars up here. This one's looking the chunkiest. 
of them all. But we can, of course, scale them and all that good stuff. Um, I am going to maybe hold Alt, move this, rotate it. We can also do this with uh, with a texture. It's probably a lot <laughs> easier on your a lot easier on your system with a texture or a shader rather a material perhaps there's the right terminology let's just see if we can get to 80 percent y'all that's what i'm trying to do I'm trying to get to 80 percent and it's going to be a good day if i can get to 80 percent i want to get this roof done okay so we got some sort of support beams up here. All right, let's bring these guys up next. We'll scale it. Yes. Yes, sir. Let's go chunk with it. I want to chunk it up. Boom. A little beefier. Holding alt. Move this stuff over. Wonderful. That is amazing. And then we have a third row. I'm going to go and chunk it up. And we can just duplicate from here. We also want to make sure our lights are in the right spot. I want that concrete jungle kind of vibe that is what i'm going for let's take these control g am i lying to you guys control ship control alt g, control god group is control g i wasn't lying control shift g well hi oh it's because my keep it's because my keyboard my control button has a hard time these days. Hmm. Yeah, okay, now that works, that works. I'm gonna delete a couple of these and uh, regroup these guys. I think if I, do I have to select them all again? No, select them all again, don't I? Group. What the heck? Control Shift G. I think you have to hit Control Shift G again. All right, there we go. And I just want to scale it up. Sweet. All right. And let's go ahead and grab these. Control G to group. We'll grab these. Control G to group. Now we have our like three main pillars, right? We'll put this dark one, we can always adjust it and make it brighter, but I'll put this dark one like in the back, in the corner. And then I'll bring these guys out. Hitting G will show and hide our lights. So kind of position them in between these lights. Like so. And it's not perfect, but we will get it there. I don't think we need to do any more tweaking beyond this. As much as I love tweaking and I want to get to the tweaking point, we should move on. Now, we have pillars to talk about. We can add some pillars coming from the top here. We can add some pillars and pipes coming from the top here. Um, yeah, this metal kind of scaffolding. Let's see what else Kitbash has. Not Kitbash. Quixel. <laughs> Let's see what else Quixel has. Um, Brandon, what's up? Thank you for the super chat. $2 for 50 character. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about, son. 
but thank you for that super chat. I appreciate you very much. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's hit up Quixel Bridge once again. And let's find some metal railing stuff. 3D assets. Now, if you guys are using Unreal Engine, all of this, all these beautiful um, Quixel assets come for free with Unreal Engine, okay? But if you're using anything other than Unreal Engine, you gotta pay for them. And I think it's like 20 bucks a month, I think, is what it is. So let's hit up. Well, you know what? They have collections. Um, ArcViz, potentially. 3D. Uh, is this where I, is this where I am? Uh, it's either environment or essentials. Let's try environment, industrial, abandoned factory. This is what I'm looking for. Yes, yes. These things, these two right here. Let's heart these guys. I always like to heart the assets that I'm using because I want to keep it all in one place. I don't have to search through this whole thing again. You know what I'm saying? Um, is that really it, huh? If you click on one of them, you can go to a similar. Oh, the only similar one is is this one. It's brother. Well, nonetheless, let's uh let's download these nanite quality. And let's also see what happens if we search for, oh, let's go into the mines. Let's dip, oh wait, warehouse though. A lot of the same assets. Wait a second. I think I just realized something. I've been playing this game Stray and it's the best game ever. I love it. Oh, these lights, these fluorescent ceiling lamps. Oh, exactly what I need. Download them. Nanite quality. Anyway, this is so dumb, by the way, but I've been playing this game Stray. It's the best game ever. It is a masterclass on 3D environments and lighting. Oh my goodness. Please download this game if you can. And I just recognized this asset right here, this box. This plastic crate, I think, is in the game. I think is in the game. I went through and I took a bunch of screenshots of different environments, as you can kind of tell by my background. So there's kind of there's potential for light stray spoilers, potentially. I'm gonna add these to the scene. Amazing. I'm also gonna add those uh, those pillars in a second, but let's see if we got anything else. Ooh, these single point lights are pretty good. This cable, this power cable. Oh man, maybe this is the chair that they're on. Why not? Let's give it a shot. Even if it's just standing in a scratched metal pole. Yes. Let's get these. And download them. Brand Doom, I agree. Stray game of the year. Game of the year for me at least. My God. I'm on my third playthrough, trying to go for the speed run. It's so much fun. Oh, it's so good. All right, what other assets here? I don't want to like pack out this warehouse. I'm just looking for a ceiling. I'm going for some subtleness here. Um, This modular beam pack could be handy. Let's go ahead and pull this.
All right. I see Ness. I'm a hundred percent down. Uh, you're saying I'm reading this as Stray is better than Elden Ring, but you put Elden Mid. I don't know what Elden Mid is, but I maybe you're not saying that. But I think Stray is better than Elden Ring for sure. It's a very different game. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Rayanch, will new non-clipping rigs come? Yes, they are in the works. Um, we have seen y'all's request for that non-clipping. We are doing our best to get them out to you. You are welcome to fix any clipping issues that work for your character. Um, as long as you're not changing the start and end pose, um, then you're able to do that. Because maybe you're trying to have the Hulk be your main character and all of this clip, like the whole thing clips. So just know that what we're providing y'all, the animations we're providing are like the base level. If you change it too much, it's not going to be the move anymore and it's going to look weird. So you really got to take that very carefully, be very careful with that. But yes, we are working on non-clipping animations and hope to be out pretty soon. All right, let's add these modular pipes. I'm just building out my assets here, guys. Um, let's go ahead and download these pipes. And let's check modular pipes. There's a, looks like there was like a, a pack for this. Okay, yeah, they only have these few. 663 visuals, what is up? Glad you're here, checking out the stream. We got steady 1300 people in the chat. Thank you all so much for joining me and hanging out. We're creating art today. We're making a cool like, little warehouse scene. Something simple, something simple like this. We're working on the roof right now. Uh, going for something like this, something like this. That's what we're going for. Okay, let's add, let's see, these pipes are added, I believe. I think we need to add these guys. And do we have, oh, we got a super chat. Zykoban, what is up? Uh, love from Malaysia, heck yeah. Um, you and the Corda crew inspire a lot of 3D artists and VFX here. Let's go, absolutely. Uh, keep it up, keep it up, keep working, keep growing. I'm glad to help y'all and um, offer any little bit of inspiration I can. I'm just trying to do my thing, create some cool stuff. So I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that you're doing the same. I hope to come down to Malaysia one day. One of my very best friends is Malaysian, and uh, we we gotta plan a Malaysia trip. That is 100%. Um, is there an age limit for the competitions? No, there's no age limit for the competitions. Horizon Forbidden West. I actually just started Horizon Zero Dawn because I missed it. So I'm hoping to hoping to get through it. It's a big game, y'all. All right, there was um there was some stuff that I did not download that is in our favorites. I know I'm missing something. It was those beams. It was those beams. Easy Sonics, what's going on? DreamWorks released its render engine as open source. You should give it a try. Huh. Interesting. Soto, have you heard anything about that? I just read it yesterday. I don't know if they already released it or they were going to release it, but it seems super interesting for like rendering with multiple computers at the same time, even on viewport. So like if you have five computers, you can get a super fast preview and things like that. Pretty interesting. Heck yeah. And I assume it's for every program? Like Unreal and C4D Blender? Um, this is a bit technical. They have a Hydra delegate. So at least it's going to work with everything that works with USD, Universal Scene Description. So it, it should get a lot of support eventually. Heck yeah. Thanks for that info. And thank you for that super chat. Shout outs to you. Easy Sonics. Good stuff. Um. All right. All right. Ooh. I remember we had there was a tip on the other stream. I don't know why this is happening at this point. It shouldn't be, 
but it was like my um my render or my textures the the streaming pool texture streaming pool we need to up that so i think it was like r dot streaming streaming pool god dang does everyone does anyone remember uh Streaming. Was it this? Nanite streaming streaming pool size? 1000? I might destroy this whole thing right now. Uh, okay. So, quick tip for you. If you hit the output log, you can see what's going on. All right, and I want to reset that back to default. So if I go to r dot, and I know this is super small, but if you go to r dot nanite, well, nanite streaming pool, where are you? Streaming pool. This one, I want to reset it back to it to its default. If you hit question mark, it'll tell you what's good with it. So. R dot now is uh, read only. It's read only. Size of streaming pool in megabytes does not include memory use for root pages. R dot streaming pool size five twelve. Last set by me. So five twelve is default, I guess. Come on now. Streaming pool tab and then five twelve. Um, R dot streaming pool size 8,000. Thank you, JR. Mark, read the FAQs. Do I have to reset my scene? I don't know. Anyway, I'm moving on. Ooh, there's some weird weirdness going on here. It probably has to do with these guys not being entirely up in the wall. Yeah. Cool. All right, lots of cool things to add in. We got our concrete beams, right? We got those. We got some pillars. We got them in. Ceiling lamps. These... Totally. All right. Totally. If we can get some like tungsten, nasty old bulbs. Yeah, that's what we need. This is a ceiling lamp in here. What is this? This is this is how we want to light our scene with these guys. Yep. That's going to look really, really nice. It's kind of what's going on here, right? And it's kind of what we have a little bit, even in this AI art. I use mid journey for these. This was mid journey. These guys were mid journey. Pretty sweet. Pretty cool program. Um, yeah, kind of like that vibe here with these lights. This is literally those lights right here. Same here. Same here. So let's set up these lights, yeah? Um, We could do... A number of things all right so if we go to window uh place actors window that's gonna have all of our stuff that we can drop into our scene go to lights all right so i know i know how to do this let's grab a cylinder shall we let's rotate it 90 and let's Go ahead and scale it down, stretch it out.
and get it in place. Generally in place. Uh, you can use the middle mouse wheel or top right up here. Change this number and that's going to lower your camera sensitivity. And I feel like these guys are a little, a little big. So I'm going to scale them down just a little bit more. Yeah, come on now. Yeah, just like that. Holding alt to duplicate. Let's make a material. And let's make an emissive material. All right, so let's make a master material. Um, I kind of already did it though. Let's see. Basic material too. I could be more organized on this. I'm just kind of messing around. So we have an emissive material. Yeah. All right. So let me let me just show y'all from scratch. We got what red. Ren, you scoundrel, you little skip scap, skip scap a hootie. I don't know why I'm saying these things. What's up, Ren? Dang, man. Sir Render in the house. What are you doing, son? What time is it? It's almost noon. Are you still in bed? What games are you playing right now, Ren? Are you trying? Don't don't come over here and get whipped in Smash Bros. Cause. I don't have it set up. All right, we can't do that. We can't do that right now. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, freaking Ren, we were doing, I forget what it was. Like we were doing, like we were live judging something. Or no, no, we did a stream together. We were like modeling and texturing a one wheel together and animating it, right? And um, I challenged Ren to come over to my house, to drive to my house and get beat live on stream in Smash Bros, of course. And uh, he came over. <laughs> he couldn't. He couldn't withstand the the pressure of of the, the the idea that someone was calling him out, saying he was just gonna get whipped. Um, he came over. You know, we traded we traded matches. Okay, we traded matches. But he pulled the match where he won, and he put it into his dynamic machines render that he did like a year ago. Good freaking times. Ren, glad you're here, dude. Hope your hope your hand is okay. <laughs> All right. We're making a miss of materials in Unreal Engine, Ren. Let me show you how easy it is. Uh, right click, make a master material. Where is it? Master material, master material, emissive. You know what, I'm gonna rename this because it's just a master material. If I hit, if I hold three and, and left click, it's gonna make a color, a solid. We'll plug that in a base color. I wonder if you right click and promote it to a parameter, it'll do that thing for you. I'm right clicking all of these parameters, specular, roughness, and I'm just promoting them to parameters. You don't have to worry about typing in anything in, you just right click and promote. Now emissive color, I wanna promote that to a parameter. I also want to, to want to control its intensity. All right, so let's say the emissive color is orange. Let's say the emissive color is orange. Great, but how do we crank it? All right, that's with a multiply node. So holding M and left click will make a multiply. If you hold S and click, you make a scalar parameter. This is gonna be called emissive intensity. That goes into B, this goes into A. Honestly, the order doesn't matter because it's multiply and we pipe that into emissive. And when your emissive is at zero, of course you're gonna have no power. One will be default. A million? Ah! All right. We want that tungsten color, all right? So I wonder, I'm sure there's a way to do this accurately. I'm sure, but I know it's like a greenish off white 
nasty kind of color. Somewhere in this range, I don't know, question mark? Or maybe we can just really go green with it, you know, like. I mean, like mint, like dentine ice color. All right, and oh, to go even a step further, I'm gonna do something crazy. All right, I'm, I don't need to be doing this. I don't need to be doing this. But let's let, let's let's take it a step at a time. All right, emissive. This is our master material. We're gonna duplicate it, or we're, I'm sorry, we're gonna make a material instance by right clicking, click material instance, and if you apply this to these tubes, they're gonna glow, they're gonna shine, they're gonna make everything look fine, and we're going to hide these lights. And have everything be lit from this light source. And you know what? We'll make this even better if we add some height fog, exponential height fog. And we set it to like 0.05. And then we like, we go to the scroll down and we click volumetric fog. That looks awful. I'm gonna tell you right now. The albedo, we should take to black, I think. Texture streaming pool, again. Interesting. Maybe it's a thing where I need to like, Maybe emissives have trouble. All right, so here's what I'll do. Let's, uh, here's what I was really gonna do. I wasn't gonna actually light the scene with these. I was gonna cheat it and then just use uh, some area lights because I think that'll be a bit more accurate lighting wise. Um, dude, this looks like a spa right now. Um, you build lighting, everything should be movable though. Nothing should be like baked. Movable. Um, anyway, I can take the emissive intensity down. So this is in our material instance. I'll take that emissive intensity down to like one. Right? And then what we can do is actually grab a, uh, where are you? A rectangular light and have this kind of be the, the true light source. Cause again, it'll just be a bit more accurate. And then um, let's go ahead. and make sure our width and height is correct. And you see this like, it almost looks like it has a square within a square or a rectangle within a rectangle. What we can do is those are, those are the barn doors. And that's exactly what this thing has. You can see how the light isn't coming up to the ceiling. It's being directed down to the ground. So we're gonna do the same thing with, with this light. If we turn off this emissive, right? We take the intensity to zero. And we look at the ground and we see how much light is hitting the ground. We can bring the barn doors in, we can angle them in. And we can angle the, the length too. Right? So now it's just like a light blasting down like that. But if we wanna actually match what we're seeing, we can bring it up like this and open it like that. And that is kind of replicating what this light is doing. And we can change the color profile, the light color to that kind of greenish tungsten look. And we can move this up like that.
something like that. And then we can take those bulbs back and just give them like 0.5 intensity, just enough to glow. What I was gonna do, the step that I was gonna go above and beyond with, who knows if this is necessary, but if you look at a light, it's not gonna be just pure white. They're actually, um, oh, you're right, thank you, Soto. It is fluorescent, it's not tungsten. Tungsten is 4200 Kelvin. Um, fluorescent, that's what I meant to say, thank you. Um, so if you look at this light, it's not just a pure bulb. There's actually a brighter core and it falls off to a less bright outer area, if that makes any sense. And then also you can get real nice with it and put some dead bugs up in there, but that's a detail that no one's gonna see. But I will try this one because I'm curious. And I think I'm gonna do it with a Fresnel. A Fresnel. I think this is how it's done. I've never messed with this. Uh... Yeah, I've never messed with this node before. I think the best way to test materials based off of uh, a channel I'm watching called Prismatica Dev, Prismatica Devs. I think it's Prismatica Dev. He always says, put whatever you're trying to test into the base color. Let's turn off this intensity and there you go you see what it's doing it's bright on the outside and it's dark on the inside and we kind of want the opposite right so if we do a one minus node that'll essentially invert what's happening so it's white here and dark here and i'm wondering like if i start plugging numbers into this what will happen so Expo tin if I set this to one, it looks default if I set it to two, three, it looks like it looks like the white is being pushed out, the black is being pushed away. So if I set it to one or 0.5, that's kind of I guess what I want it to look like. Um, if you hit one, that will make a, uh, a constant. And it's not a parameter. We don't want to adjust this. We don't think we need to adjust this. So I could type 0.5 into here, but since I've never done this before, I'm gonna leave it as a parameter. I might want to adjust this. Um, from here, it looks like that is what I want it to look like. So, does that mean we have to multiply this whole deal. See, I get so sidetracked. This is fun. With this into emissive color, we can get that out of base color. And if we turn on our, our glow, I think that totally works. Yeah, that totally works. So now... Maybe you could have a, a brighter base color. That way it's like the color of the lamp when it's turned off. And the edges aren't like pure black. I don't know. Let's see if we can get the dramatic effect first. Right, we'll go for the most dramatic and see if we can get it working. And then we can work in from there. So maybe... If I set this to zero... Will that up? Yes. Okay. So that that updates. I'm gonna just mess with this on the screen off to the side here and see what happens. 0 0.02. Yeah, you kind of get it. Kind of get it there. And then the base color. I don't know, like a yellow, like a nasty tinted yellow. Uh, okay, so but that's going that doesn't work base color doesn't show through I think I just need Hmm I'm so close to giving up right now because this doesn't matter. It's such a small detail <laughs> Let's get back to building the scene. God dang it.
we can group this light with this little fluorescent bulb. I'll grab these and we'll hit control G, put that into a folder and call this uh, fluorescent, let's see, fluorescent light. Lab Studios, ooh, that's nice, I like that. All right, so you have the fluorescent details. 6400 Kelvin, use RGB, you have an RGB code for me, thank you. Let's see, all right, 252, 247. That's fluorescent? That's just like white, basically. Huh. And that's so bright. So we'll have to definitely take that down. And we'll grab our light. Rect light, control shift G to ungroup, and you said the Kelvin temperature is 6400. All right, let's get rid of our fog. And we can turn down the intensity of this light. A bit intense. And we can probably scale it, or ooh, we can double them up. Like this. Yep, and then we can control G those guys and move them around our scene. All right, cool. Middle mouse wheel to adjust your camera speed. Or is that toggle up on the right side? Kins, Ren is telling you to check your phone. What? Why? Why? A video this is a video of Ren in bed. <laughs> no, why? Uh, Ren, this is Ren right now. Ren, this is what you, you asked for it, dude. They're gonna see your bony little feet, your shrimpy little chicken toes. happy Ren are you happy love you Ren little shrimpy chicken feet <laughs> oh good times let's duplicate some lights yeah looking good why are these guys going all immovable on me they should be movable Boom, boom, boom. Grab these, push them back, bring them up. Well, they kind of want to be in the scene too. And we'll probably have to adjust the, the radius of the barn doors on those back ones because it's a little intense. Get rid of those. We can grab all of these guys, all these rectangle lights. 
and kind of bring them down just a touch. And we can open up our sequencer to see what our camera's looking like. Very dark. All right, so we can grab our camera and adjust the exposure. So what I'm doing here, if I grab the camera, here on the right side, if we look for uh, exposure, you can see I've set it to manual and the comp compensation is set to 12. So 15 could be nice. And let's get that those barn doors off the back wall. It's not looking too hot right now. Let's see. All right, so I want to I want to select all of these at once. All of these guys, we should be able to adjust the barn door length on all of them. That's just zero. Look at this reference here. That light doesn't look like it's doing too much. They're definitely hitting this wall with a bunch of lights off screen. I think they're more just lighting the scene with other lights and then just using these as, as filler. So they may not actually be lighting the scene with those, which would mean I would kind of split the difference here. I would take off all of these rectangle lights as an example right we get rid of all those we, de we definitely don't want to light the scene with with this emissive material because well you know to be honest i don't know the answer but let's see where are you uh emissive instance if i just we crank it This is what it looks like if we try and light it with these bulbs only. It doesn't look good. We just want enough so that they're there, you know? And then we can go back to just the normal lighting in the room. Which again, doesn't look right, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, what else do we need to add? We need to add some support beams. So we can do this with the concrete. Let's try and get a floor looking good. This floor is not a vibe right now. Um, let's go to mega scans, surfaces. Cracked concrete floor. Let's pull that out and see what it looks like. Looks like some mud. It would be nice to have a blue tint on it. We open up that master or that uh, material instance. We can go to albedo tint. We can tint it bluish. Interesting, interesting. See, I have scratched metal pole, rusty metal, rusty metal, rusty metal. I also have my materials, my endless concrete materials. Let's see what this floor looks like. It's 
not bad. Is it reflective? We want that nice reflections off the floor. See, this is a semi-reflective floor here. Reflection on the floor here. I uh, can't really see it too much on this one. Obvious on this one. But a little reflection goes a long way. So what I'm doing right now is I'm falling into the trap of adding details. I'm trying to get it locked in perfectly. And I don't I don't need to be doing that right now. I need to get, again, as quickly to the 80% mark as possible. It's very easy to get sidetracked as you can see. And it's I think it's it's definitely difficult doing it live as well, where you know there's definitely an element to it where it's like I feel like I need to be on, I feel like I need to entertain, and I don't want to just be silent. If I was being as productive as possible, I would be just silent especially since I hadn't done this before so it's a tough mix there's some big pillars I'll try and get all of these uniformly scaled. Something like that. Now, one thing that this uh, this dolly move does, it's called a Hitchcock zoom or a dolly zoom, where you're you're dollying in and zooming out at the same time. And you're you're really gonna tell what's going on if there's stuff in the foreground, there's stuff in the background for it to actually mess with. So. If I hop into the camera here, I have to adjust my exposure again because we turn those lights back on. And we go through our move. You can see that things in the foreground and things in the background are, are really what's getting that, that movement, the sense of movement. So the more stuff you have in the foreground and the background, and the more depth than you're seeing there is, the, the more of an effect you'll get with this camera move. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of challenging myself with a smaller scene, but I'm gonna have some stuff scattered around and whatnot. So I'm not too worried about it, but that's why I'm putting these pillars in front. We can also take these guys and move them to the back as well. Or split the difference somewhere. So it's maybe more along the lines of this kind of setup. I want 
gonna switch these because just cuz one's brighter one's darker and we can even brighten this up uh, alt is it alt F control F no um, control B or browse that will find the asset. If we double click the master material, we can just adjust the, let's see, albedo controls, the brightness. That's what we want right there. Yeah, nice. The back wall. All right, that back wall is gonna be very, very important because it's gonna catch a lot of light. It's gonna have a lot of details. So something like this, we can go to town on that back wall and add a ton of details on that back wall. But I'm curious as to how much of that back wall will be seen because, again, I want, I should focus on the roof. We were talking about the roof. I need to focus on the roof because this is gonna be the scene similar to this setup here once we get into our, our final camera position. I'm planning on having a different camera move that starts further back because I'm introing the video, right? So I want to start further back, dolly in close, close, close until I get into the locked camera position that y'all have. So I'm going to see a little bit more of my scene from way back behind. So let's keep focusing on the roof. I don't know how much will be seen of the actual background. By the time we get here, I think the scene is pretty locked. Let me think about some screens. Cause I want there to be video screens that flicker on and display like this virtual reality that the character is in. So technically they're gonna be surrounded by screens, um, which is tough. Cause if they're surrounded by screens, then you don't really see any of the background and whatnot. Um, so I have to figure out how that's gonna work. Now I have this like temp set up here. These temporary screens that'll cover the character. And I think the floor will probably have some screens too, which could be pretty sweet. I just need to figure out like, are they in a room of screens or are they in a warehouse? Or are they in a warehouse, in a room of screens in a warehouse? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I have to figure out the blend between that and how much you're seeing of the other, the other setup. Cause it's essentially like a VR room, you know? It could just be a box. It could be a box with like no roof and um, that could work. So that when you get in with the camera, you've landed in this box, but the box is in the middle of a warehouse. I guess very similar to Mission Impossible. Now that I think about it, yeah. Let me hit shotdeck.com really quick. It's a website where you get to look up different movie frames and stuff. Let me log in first. All right. Hmm. That's weird. Mission Impossible. What was the name of Mission Impossible 5? 
Rogue Nation? Is that it? No. All right, we got some super chats done. We saved polar bears. What's up? How much work goes into these monthly challenges? Well, that is a that is a question. A lot of work, absolutely a lot of work. Um, it depends on the person. Some people spend five hours on their render. Some people spend two hundred hours on their render. So it really depends. It's really up to you and, and how ambitious you're trying to be in your scene. I'm trying to do something in the middle. I'm not trying to go too ambitious, um, but I am trying to do something pretty cool. Uh, something that I'm proud of. So yeah, I'm right there in the middle. Uh, we got some others too, very nice. Druve Luke Music, probably, probably butchering that, apologies. Your main reference image is from the music video Wide Open by the Chemical Brothers. Yep, done at my company, The Mill, just before I joined. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, that's one of the best music videos I've ever seen, hands down. Uh, absolute incredible, <laughs> incredible amount of work in that one. Uh, and Mark, hi, love your work. You are a huge inspiration. Thank you, Mark, for the super chat. Very kind of you. Thanks for hanging out with us. Got a thousand people up in here. Good stuff. The fifth movie was, uh, see, Rogue Nation. It was the last one. It was the one where, like, it was the one where he, um, was interrogating that dude in the hospital bed, and then the room like fell open. It was that one. I don't remember the name. I mean, I can look it up really quick. Let me look this up really quick. It is Rogue Nation. That is the fifth one. Why is it six? How, which one are they, are they on at this point? I don't even know. Fallout, that's the one I'm talking about. All right, yes. Yeah, it's this scene right here. Where like, he's in the hospital room with him, right? And then the room falls open to reveal this. I guess I'm going for something very similar. So I'm going to save this, boom, drag it into my PureF document and take a look. So yeah, there's like the scaffolding up here. Um, it's clearly like a film set. And it's this open room inside of a bigger room. So I guess that's literally what I'm trying to do. <laughs> okay. All right. That's a good, that's a good reference. That's a very good reference in terms of like physical space and what's going on. Nice. Okay. Shot deck. Yeah. It's a good service. This is a very good service. So I feel like these pillars wouldn't be in here. They definitely wouldn't be in here. And the room might be a little smaller too. I'm trying to think, cause this is our final, our final pose. What we could do is make the, these guys like, the aspect ratio of our actual scene, which is, one by two, three, seven, which is movie widescreen, which that basically is right there. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Okay. This room would be big too. This would be a big, pretty big room. This is cool though. I like this, this vibe. It's a cool vibe. I think this setup can work. Again, the idea is to justify all these other renders that are gonna be happening in the challenge by making kind of like a VR room and everything spawns from these. These these like screens right here will flicker. I'm gonna make an env another environment and these screens will flicker and light this character in the environment and it'll kind of seamlessly blend into the actual environment and then it'll go into the renders. So that's that's the idea. Cool. I think we can probably do like every other one here. Holding Alt Duplicate. Awesome. Sweet. And we can open this room up even larger if we need to, but we're starting to get the vibe here. So it'll come from here. The montage will start. And then we'll kind of dolly in until we're in into this little room here and I can take this floor piece as well I think and bring this up to have a ceiling as well yeah super cool obviously you can see why I'm using 2001 as reference because <laughs> it's a it's a similar setup no doubt this looks cool um, yeah this is gonna be awesome this character will be all connected up to machinery and stuff. Ghost in the Shell vibes for sure. Soul Cipher, can a beginner win? I'd say there's a chance. Um, I think so far. Well, I don't. I, yeah, it's, that's a tough one. Can a beginner win? Anything could. Excuse me, anything can happen. All right, I'll say that much. Anything can happen. Um, obviously, the more experience you have, the better you're going to be. Which is why we do these weekly challenges on my Discord server to get people prepped up to I've heard this so many times, and it's so cool that like people have done the weekly challenges on my Discord server, and they are prepped now for these challenges, which is great. That's, that's, that's the best thing ever. Um, cause yeah, they're a little intimidating. That's, that's a fact, but if you don't dive in, like when, how are you going to get better? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't like focus on winning this thing too hard, especially if you're just starting, I would focus more on like, where are you at with your skill level? And can you raise the bar for yourself just a little bit? Can you step up to the next level? I think that's a great goal to have. Ah, okay. Let's see if we can't get some like, I just wanna block this in. All right, so I don't wanna go too crazy with it, but this kind of scaffolding up here, 
let's see if we can't get that going. Um, cause I think that's a big part of the, the gack as you call it, um, up above this thing, bunch of gack. Gack is like wires, cables, pipes, uh, carts, pipe. It's all the stuff on the film set that, um, is not, not to be seen. It should not be in the final image. If you turn the camera 180 and you see the crew and you see the cameras and the carts and the cables, that's all the gack. You know, so that's going to be the detail of this scene here for me is, is all the gack. And that's going to be up here. This, uh, I almost want to call it truffling. I'm going to call it truffling. Let's work on our truffling today. Um, so what we can do, I can actually make a new level and just call this uh, basic. We'll save this. File save as under levels. And this will just be called uh, MM stands for moving meditations in this case. And I want to make a project where I can just build assets and stuff. Um, and they'll just be called assets. And let's make one of these trufflings. Cylinder. We can bring a character in, the stand-in character. Under, let's see, where are you? Under mesh. That way we know what scale we're dealing with. And I'm just going to make one piece of this and then duplicate it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn on snapping. What is that? Uh, we went out. One, two, three, four. Five. Let's go up one, two, three, four, five. And let's duplicate these. Down. I'm using that. Um, I'm using this as reference here. Looking at this. I'm sure there's assets you can get on the on the store. But I'm doing it this way for now. And then let's see, they kind of turn into a little X. change this let's see to every five degrees so we can go 45 degrees what I did the wrong one it's this one boom just like that we'll take these guys and push them back a little bit and I think, okay, besides getting this over here, holding Alt to duplicate. We just need it on 
bottom part too. We'll go 90 degrees. About like that. And then we'll go again. 90 degrees there. And 90 degrees here. And finally, these guys here and here. Boom. Bring those in. And then this is what we'll duplicate. So I'm gonna group all this. Control G to group. I'll pop that into a folder called scaffolding. And alt drag these out. And instead of duplicating the folder a bunch, I'm actually just gonna duplicate this stuff here. Cool. That should be enough for what we need. So I'm gonna just grab the scaffolding folder and we are going to copy it. We're gonna open up our scene here. And we'll paste it. Ah, it just grabbed the folder. Let's open the assets level again. Grab all that stuff. Copy it. Paste it. Awesome. I think I can get rid of the psych. Let's group this, uh, let's group this scaffolding. It looks like that is the case. Sweet. Yo, I just thought of another good reference too. Um, let's see, Ian Hubert, Dynamo Dream, literally the first shot. Very simple. Warehouse. Boom, grab that. Paste it into Purif. And we got ourselves another reference. If you grab all this stuff, you can hit a uh, control alt up arrow and it'll equalize all the frame sizes and control P will automatically kind of like group them together and organize them. But this is a good reference for just a very, very simple. He's got that roof down. His roof is solid, or sorry, his ceiling is solid. Um, and it's just a big old room with literally like there's no detail on these pillars. It's all about the lighting. See, here's what I mean about like the lights that are bright in some areas, dim in the other, like he's even doing it here, up in the corners. And there's there's texture to these lights. They're not just white. They have a fall off to them, which is really nice. So I'll definitely be using that as inspiration too. All right, so the scaffolding, the scaffolding. We're seeing scaffolding here as well. It's just a little different. And here.
And let's go ahead and give this some material. I'm gonna hop into my master materials. Let's actually just take one of these basic material instances. I will duplicate it. And I'll just call this uh, Chrome. there's an easier way to do this select all these guys materials I'll drop this chrome material boom on all of them and we'll open it up to adjust it to go with a chrome look you want one in the metallic uh, roughness we can do like 0.2 specular needs to be one base color I believe should be black I lied white um, but you can dim it as you get closer to black and I think that look is a little bit better um, and Then we can drop that. Yeah, boom onto here, but it's looking a little intense. So instead of looking at this ball, I'm gonna look at the actual Scaffolding itself. It's a, it's pretty chromed out. So I'm gonna Take the roughness up to maybe 0.5 Drop the base color maybe a little bit more Three, five roughness. Yeah, that's looking cool. So if you were to really set up some some freaking E walls, then I would definitely want to make sure they don't fall down. And having some scaffolding in the mix is probably a good idea. So I would do something like this. Duplicate it over to the other side. Oh, so many pieces. What the heck? Group this stuff, man. Come on. That's why you really gotta make sure that um, you're organized. Easy Sonics, that, that, that would be great. I would love to make it one piece. So why don't I select one box with all cylinders. Make it as a static mesh. One box with all cylinders, one box. You mean one folder? It's a little a little out of hand here. All 
Alright, so that's that. Uh, these guys in the middle, let's see if I just... Ugh, come on now. One thirty-five to two fourteen. Be gone. All right. See, this is the stuff that's not fun, right? Asset organization, all that good stuff. Let's get our ceiling beams organized. All right, pop those into a folder. Fluorescent. What is in fluorescent? Fluorescent light. All right, these are our fluorescent lights. They're both the same thing. Okay. lamps in a folder or uh, housing fluorescent housing and then the actual light bulbs themselves all of these get those in another folder Call them bulbs. So the, there's our fluorescent light. So that goes under lighting, interior lights. And these are uh, room light. Okay. And we have the room itself. We have some scaffolding, we have some screens. All right, so inside of the room, let's see, we need a geometry folder, which we can put the room in here, the scaffolding, the screens. We have a plastic chair. Let's try and get that other chair, the Megascans chair in here. I'm really glad I'm doing this. I. I think I finally figured out what my scene looks like now. So I'm very happy about that. I was a little hesitant before. I didn't quite know what it was gonna be before this. So I'm glad to finally have figured it out and, and really fi find that uh, Mission Impossible reference. This is it. It's basically like this setup here, but with video screens inside of a warehouse something like this something like this something like this so i'm feeling pretty good about that feeling pretty good about that but i'm gonna go for as long as i can today y'all i'm gonna go for as long as i can because i need to get work done on this thing how's everyone doing you guys doing all right? Following along, doing some art yourself. <sighs> um. So if y'all are just popping in or 
hanging around. We do have that stream exclusive Kitbash code. You can save 20% off on anything you want on kitbash.com. We'll be doing these exclusive discounts throughout these challenge streams. So definitely check that out if y'all are trying to, if you were thinking about getting some Kitbash stuff anyway. Um, yeah, this has been, this is, I mean, I'm saying like I'm, I'm wrapping up. I'm just taking a little break at this moment because I need to keep going. I'm glad I finally figured out where I'm going, what I'm doing. Um, which is the hardest part, figuring out what you the heck you're going to do. <laughs> uh, so we got there. Reference is key. It's, it's huge. It's guiding my process through this stream, as you guys are seeing. Very, very helpful. And I'll get into the details later uh, and just keep working throughout the week. And hopefully next week when I come back next week, I'll have a hopefully animated character with all the stuff on them. That's my goal. That is my goal. That would be the hardest part for me. I know how to place assets. I know how to light things. What I don't know how to do is create a character, find a character. I'm gonna figure out how to put them onto this mocap data, which there's tutorials out there. There's one on the server, on the Discord server. If you wanna figure out how to do it in both Blender or an Unreal Engine, uh, there's tutorials for both on the Discord server. Um, in the Moving Meditations, uh, what is it, FAQs and Tips channel, uh, or category rather, or channel, whatever. I get confused, Discord is confusing sometimes. Um, so I also need to figure out how to do dynamic cables and stuff hanging from this character's head down to the ground. And I'm probably gonna simulate all that inside of C4D and export an Alembic of some sort and bring that into Unreal Engine. That way my simulation looks really nice. I'll probably do some cloth as well in C4D. We'll see if I have that cloth figured out. I'm just gonna try and get a version first of an animated character with some something on their head, some sort of VR sci-fi thing with like all the wires hanging down. I'll go for that first. Um. Yeah, so much work to be done. We're one week in out of the four weeks. And my goal is to have a version done pretty much by pretty much by the next stream. I would very much like that. A lot of the detail work is going to be in adding uh, decals and whatnot to my walls, to my background. It's how I'm gonna get things like, like this, like these stains here on the wall, all these pock marks. This bottom layer here of grunge, this black, that's those are gonna be decals. All that stuff's gonna be decals. Um, what's another example of a decal? Basically all the, all the damage, all the imperfections will be decals. There's gonna be a lot of detail in these pipes here too that I'm gonna have to get right. But let's keep going. Let us keep going. Spinozy video. What's up, yo? You say, love you, man, keep doing what you're doing. Finally going to be able to participate. Yes, yes, that is what I love to hear. That's good news. People participating in these challenges for the first time. Heck yeah. Good stuff, man. Thank you for that super chat. Oh, let's get those, let's get the mega scans, 3D assets going. Let's see what we got. So we got our concrete pillars. We got our fluorescent ceiling lamp. We have some modular pipes to work with. There's a lot of stuff we didn't actually bring over. So let me hop back in and bring some things over. We have this chair 
we have these pipes. So I probably could have made, um, let's see, let's see. Yeah, let's bring this over. Oh no, I don't want highest quality, I want nanite. Oh, I'll, actually, let me, let me, let me go back in there and. Ceiling beam, ceiling beam, pillar, 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 metal chair. Let's delete this metal chair. And then those pipes. I guess I guess the pipes didn't come in, which is good news. Cause so I want all these guys as nanite quality. Oh, weird. Huh. Nanite's not even an option. Okay, so it is for the chair. Let's bring that in. But these metal poles, we can do medium quality even. And then there was like some metal scaffolding that I wanted to bring in as well. Like support beams, metal support beams. These ones. The rusty pillars. Awesome. Let's work on this floor and have it so it's not two two pieces. Let's just have it be one piece. And same deal for the ceiling. I don't think there's a reason to have it be six pieces. I'm just cleaning up right now. Samir, hey, you're very welcome. Enjoy your evening. Thanks for hanging out with us. See you soon. All right, so I have my infinite concrete materials. They're on my gum road. You all can grab them if you want. The link is in the description to my gum road. Let's see if we can't use them here. This is exactly what I made them for, it was for like large scale situations um so let's start with long wall one and see how long this wall really is all right i think the long wall one is too long for all right here we go so this just needs to be tiled and adjusted let me get rid of these guys And I don't want to stretch these walls. 
because I don't want to have to counter stretch them. I, I would I would certainly have to do that. So I'm just scaling them up large. Sweet. So I don't know if that is the right material. Let's try long wall three. This one could work. Long wall four is insane. I have to scale that down a lot. Sweet, that looks good. Oh, god dang it. See if this one will look good here.
That's pretty cool. The back wall, I'd probably have to make a new material, a new instance for that back wall, but I think for now it's okay. I'm not trying to get it perfect. Hmm. Texture streaming pool over 1.6 gigs. All right. Uh, Maja, yes, this will be available to watch after the live stream. All right, and the floor. Nice, I can take this floor and I rotate it 90 degrees. That's pretty cool. Uh, Dolford, I don't, I don't remember how to fix the texture streaming pool thing. Um, it is in one of my last streams though. It's in the stream with like the, uh, the sewer. It's like the last Unreal Engine stream I did in the sewer. And I think there it's lit. It's, it's marked in the time code where it's called like pro tip or something. If anyone knows, okay, I believe it should be console command R dot streaming pool size zero. R dot streaming dot pool size zero. All right, we'll see if that works. So with these uh, materials I made, they actually come with uh, a dry and a wet version of the texture. So you can get this nice like wet floor look. All right, let's find that with control B. We can darken these. Actually, I'm gonna probably darken the floor. And let's do brightness. 0.5 or something. Yeah, and these walls too, I feel like can be darkened too. What I'm doing is I'm clicking the wall itself. I hit Control B to browse for the asset. It's in. actually, I don't even need to browse. I just click the asset and on the bottom right here where my head is blocking, we can Move that over. Yeah, thanks, Soto. Um, you can click this little Find Folder button, and that'll take you to the material that that it's uh, that it has applied to itself. You can open that up, and I have this on the other screen. This is my material instance. I've set this up so I can adjust brightness, intensity, roughness, all that good stuff. And I'll take it down to like I don't know, 0.75. They look a little blue to me as well. Could be the colorblind, but I, I threw a tint on there. So we can take that tint somewhere towards the orange side of life. Aim for the ground. I will 
tint it as well. Just a touch. Then we can darken up these pillars. But I, again, I'm I'm falling into the detail that that doesn't really need detail at this moment in time. I'm falling into that trap. I can't do that. I need to work as broadly as possible and then get detailed. But I'm digging this. It's looking pretty cool. Um, the walls. Maybe the walls could be more of a brick. Like this? I guess we're not really seeing the walls there. These are painted brick, yep. Plaster, yeah, I feel like concrete probably isn't the move for the walls. I think brick would add a nice bit of detail to that. So let's see what Quixel has, shall we? Clay, don't give up, my friend. There are tutorials on the Discord server talking about ex your exact problem in the rules, tips, and FAQs channel. So don't, don't give up quite yet, my friend. All right, we're looking for brick, like this, painted brick, perfect. Highest quality is gonna be 8K, but let's go with high quality at 4K for now. I'm just worried you're really gonna see the tiling. And that's why I made these concrete textures called, that's why they're called endless concrete is because you don't see the tiling. I got stuff 100K pixels out into the distance. <laughs> like there's 50K, 100K, 25K, um, they go out there. So that's the only thing I'm worried about with these surfaces here, but let's try it. Painted brick wall. Yeah, I already see the tiling. And I'm gonna have to hide that with a ton of individual little decals that's gonna take forever. But let's see how this feels. We will adjust the tiling. Probably wanna have to tile three times. Yeah, the scale feels right, but obviously it's tiling, right? So that's the tricky part. That is certainly the tricky part. You could duplicate the material and mix between a larger one and a smaller one, but it's tough because bricks are all the same size, right? You could do a clean version and then go in and add these scratched up bricks with decals, but that's a whole bunch of work as well. I'm sure there's there's gotta be something. It's gotta be some sort of, honestly, I could scan a brick wall. I could photo scan a brick wall and put it in place there. That could be a good move. But let's see what else Quixel has. We'll go to surfaces. We got brick and we can actually search by size. So I believe, oh wait, you can't search by size, uh, can you? Yes, here we go. All right, so this little uh, up at the top right here, it's inverted pyramid. You can go all sizes and look for eight meters. There are no brick textures that are eight meters, but four by eight, perhaps. 
They have some of those. Okay. Rough brick wall, plastered brick floor. Let's try pla plastered brick floor. Let's favorite that. Um. Let's go with this standard brick wall. I'll favorite that. We can turn it white. I'll grab both. Oh, let's let's see what else we have. Two to four meters. Two to four meters is probably what we were dealing with. And we're really gonna see these guys tile. Yeah, there's the one that we had. But you're just gonna see the tiling on these guys. This one may not be bad. It's pretty uniform. Which is kind of what we want. And then we can spice it up later, but... Let's download high quality. We, I don't think we need 8K. Oh, this one's great. This one's great. It's gonna tile like no one's business though. Because the more detail it has, the more uniqueness it has, like a big old hole in the wall, you're really gonna see that tile. But we'll see what we can do. And we'll probably just have to be hiding a bunch of stuff. Half timbered wall. Let's try, let's try this. Let's see what this looks like. That could be fun. Ooh, damaged plaster wall, that's a good one too. Alright, so there's no shortage of two to four meter sized brick walls here on Quixel. We need the larger ones though. So let's also look at concrete floors. We can mess with that as well and find a floor that looks good. Um, ground, forest roots, jungle, no surfaces. Concrete. Hmm. Damaged. Yes. And then we'll search for floor in here. And we'll see if they have any large size. Four to eight meters. Wow, that one's interesting. I'm gonna just try that because it looks crazy. Worn concrete. Oh, that's a nice one. All right, let's see what we got. So you see the less detail is, uh, there is the less it'll look like it's tiling.
It's not bad. You can see the tiling in it a little bit, but you can hide it with some some decals. Um, let's keep moving. I don't like that look. I don't like that look. Yeah, not really a fan. Cracked concrete floor. Pretty cool again. Not gonna lie. Damage wall, plaster. Yeah, tiling in that one's pretty intense. This one will be interesting. It looks pretty cool. Ah, man, so tough. Yeah, it's interesting, though. That's the one we tried. Worn concrete. I think this was for the floor. I like that other one better. This one here. Or even... Even my texture. That looked pretty darn good. One of these two. And we also have some other assets to test out. Let's see, 3D assets. It was those uh, those beams. These rusty pillars. Instead of our concrete guys so many options when it comes to 3d let's flip that bring it on up wow what are the odds of that connecting nearly perfectly that's pretty crazy Also combo these two like something like that because they are doing it here let's see well, I guess it's the pillar and then the pipe next to it and then you have it here you have like this random pillar here which definitely feels out of place but it's obviously there pretty sweet But it feels like more of a pipe situation could be here.
the heck? Weird. So why are these off center? What the heck? Let's see if we can't talk about decals. I'm trying to hit all the angles um, for y'all. So if we do, let's see, decals, bam. And there should be some like grunge stuff, like leakage perhaps. We want something that we can really stretch out like this here, actually, this leakage might be perfect. So I'm gonna bring over a high quality version. Let's download this and we'll add it. And this is really gonna help with the floor. Let's bring this out, right? We can see this on the floor here, right? And it's really cool the way it works. It's a volume and it's projected on whatever, you know, whatever object it's overlapping, right? So I'm gonna bring this over to the wall and let's go ahead and rotate it up 90 degrees and move it up. Something like this, okay. And we're going to want to scale this down. And we're going to have to figure out a way for it to not like go over the floor like it is right there. So I wonder if we can like scrunch this in. It's pretty close. We want it to be right, right down there. There we go. It's super thin, but that's exactly what we want. And we can take this, hopefully, and um, stretch it out. And duplicate it. I want, yes, I want this. Bam. That adds so much. Look, it's in the reference, y'all. It's in the reference. Right? The answers come from the reference. So if we go up into this material, we can drop its brightness as well. So that's going to be our albedo controls. Wait, I lied. Hold on. Albedo intensity. Albedo intensity. Color overlay. Color overlay. That's what we want. We just want it to be black. There you go. I think it's a little much. It's a little too dark. Um, so we just take that overlay intensity slider to zero and then just work it up like 0 0.5, 0 0.75 maybe. And we can probably drop the scale of these too.
just like that. I'm gonna bring these over to the other side. And you know what, before I do that actually, I'm going to alt drag it out, duplicate it. I'm going to flatten it on the ground and have it be here as well. For whatever reason, it's reacting in very interestingly here, but we'll get there. So I might have to, let's see, duplicate this thing and pop this new material onto these two and turn off that color overlay. Interesting, okay, that's not doing much for us. So that is, that is a bug of some sort. I don't know what, but. Hmm. I wonder if it has to do with my material, maybe, because this is my material. As opposed to a mega scans material. So I wonder if I put a new surface on it. No? Okay. That's good to know. I mean, let's just find it. Control B. Search for it. Now it's working properly, we just reset it. Oh, it's because it was too scrunched? But we opened it up. I don't know. It's working now, that's all that matters. There we go. People in the chat were saying that it was upside down. Maybe that's it. Oh, y'all are saying it's upside down, maybe. Hey, you're right. Thank you, guys. Always learning something new from you guys. Thank you so much. Boom, all right, so now with that, we can copy this over to the other side. Alt drag. Why'd it go up like that? What the heck? Oh no, it's on the ground now, okay. And we're gonna whoop, do a big old 180 and slide it on down. Awesome. So that's decals, all right? Um, and I'm gonna have to decal up this entire place. 
So a lot of work, a lot of time is gonna be spent working on them decals, on those details. All right, let's see what our camera looks like. But I guess our camera is only gonna be in this like little close up area here. Um, I'm gonna duplicate the camera. And we get up in there. Let's see. We don't need both of these on here. Goodness. Come on now. bug where I change my layout and I can't pilot the camera so I have to actually go to it hit G to reveal it and then I can I can find it Let's take this camera back. And I'm gonna open up that focal length. So it feels the the this room feels a little narrow. So I would probably do a little something to open it up just a touch, but I can get I can get there. I also have these like post process materials that I can use. I'll show you how it works really quick. Materials, post-process material. So I followed a tutorial on how to do this one. And it's basically making a camera distortion material. Right? That uses the screen position and a radial gradient. Um, piped into emissive color. And that will allow you, actually, if you have a post-process volume, if you go down to... Post process, let's see, where is it, where is it? Post process materials, under right under render features, you can add a post process material and it'll actually allow me to get some of that camera distortion that you're seeing. Um, I mean, you know, Ian Huber does it a lot. You can see that bend there. Um, and it's what happens with an actual camera. This one is very subtle here. Very, very subtle. Usually you try and like correct for those things when you're actually filming something. 
but you can see it. Um, yeah, even here, Chris Nolan, boom, right? You see that bend on both sides? It bulges out. It's very subtle. You but, can see it really well on the on the ceiling, maybe. On the ceiling up here? Yeah. Yeah, it's all these little subtle camera um, things that usually you want to edit out, but with 3D, we want to edit it in. Um, Ian goes goes heavy with it. I know some of y'all go heavy with it, but it's one of those things where like you gotta go to the point where you barely you just don't notice it. So this is too much. This is far too much. This might be the most I'd go. And God, point oh seven five is what I meant. This might be looking nice. Oh, we got a super chat up here. What's up? Spino C video. Thanks again for that super chat. Uh, do you animate things like cars driving, cloth, sims, etc. in C4D, then import them into UE5? Yes, that is what I will be doing. Um, I'm gonna do my like cloth simulation inside of C4D. I'm gonna do my like cable simulation in C4D and then export that as an Olympic into Unreal. And that's the way to go, baby. At least for me, you know. Ah. Easy Sonics, is there a way to share the tutorial for the distortion material? I don't remember it, but let me try looking really quick for you. Let's see, camera distor no, lens distortion. Lens distortion, Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Yeah, this is it. It doesn't work with... It does not work with PNGs. But... Here we go. Let me paste this for you guys. Boom. That is the lens distortion tutorial. It's UE4, but it works in UE5 as you can see here. Um, it doesn't work with PNG exports. I'm not sure if it works with EXR exports, but I know it works with JPEG exports. So you'll have to experiment with that. It'll just give you a black screen. Yeah, but I really feel like, I really feel like this setup needs uh, a bigger room, honestly. So I'm going to move this stuff out even further. Yep. 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 We're gonna have to kind of mess with all of our scale settings again. This back one I don't care about, I'll just stretch it. The reason I'm not stretching the other walls, I said it before, but I don't want to have to like unstretch it with the materials. It's just annoying. Oh, I forgot about the ceiling. We have an actual ceiling. I got excited. I love texturing. Yeah, 
it'd be cool to go for that like uh I almost want to say foil. It's not foil, but it's um like insulation material. Ooh, and this this wall, this back wall can get pushed back even. That feels better. Yep. That feels a bit more vast. Sweet, sweet. Batman layer, almost. Yeah, let me just work our lighting. So we have this uh, these screens, which are just emissives. Materials, uh, basic, is it this one? Let's see. Whoa. That's crazy. That's pretty cool. We should definitely lock our exposure too here in the, the post-process volume. So that way what we're seeing is actually what our camera is seeing. So we'll go exposure, metering mode, manual, and I think that was 12. lights too. These lights gonna get turned up. There we go. Take this camera, we'll turn it up a little bit, a little underexposed. Twelve. Why is twelve here different from twelve here? Huh. Interesting. I don't know why. Is different. Maybe it's like one stop off for some reason. Sweet. Yeah, so this is when we get in to our camera angle, and since I'm starting the montage, I'm gonna start it out here. Let's get a bit a little depth of field, so I'll probably raise this up too. Something like that, yeah. All right, um, and then depth of field. Yes, depth of field. 
This is starting to turn into something, y'all. I'm, I'm getting happy with this. I think it's a little too front lit. Let me get the depth of field, and then we'll get that front light out of there. All right, actor to track. We want to track this mannequin for now, okay? So I'll click on that mannequin. Oh, actually, no, 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 sorry. Undo. We don't want to track them. We we want the, because um, we want the camera position to do our own thing, right? It's the, where is it? The focus settings. We can set that to tracking, focus settings. Tracking, tracking focus settings. And we'll eye drop the mannequin. Then we can change our f-stop to like 2.8. Ah, so this is reacting like an actual camera. Because when I let in more exposure from the camera, I'll show you. So, with this camera here, if I were to... You see how the background is all blurry and stuff? Right? Blurrier background, shallower depth of field, more light. You're literally opening the iris up to allow more light in but if you squint your eyeballs you can actually do this with your eyes you like look at your hands like this and you squint your the background fingers will be more in focus if you open your eyes fully they're going to be uh less in focus so if i were to bring my everyone did their hand thing i'm sure i'm 100 percent <laughs> sure <laughs> i did it let's see i don't want to mess this up this up ah. all right eh. okay that's shutter speed which also controls how bright things are but the f-stop here in front notice as I crank this down the background gets more in focus all right if I turn up the ISO to compensate You can see the background is now more in focus. But this is what just happened to me in Unreal. I took it from an F aperture of nine to a 2.8 and it made things bright. So then I gotta turn my ISO back down. So that's how cameras work. And that's how our camera is working in Unreal Engine right now. Kind of don't like that. So I want to switch it back and let's figure out how to do it. Okay. But I want to take that down instead of 2.8, let's take it to like 1.2, which makes it even worse, right? So let's go to our exposure settings. And that's kind of why, like, um, that's why I like doing brightness instead of this method. I think I set it to histogram. That's auto. So obviously that's blowing out like crazy. That goes to auto. Basic. Looks like it's auto as well. If I set it to manual, I can bring this up. Something like this. Okay. Heck yeah, all right. So what we can do now is if I hop out of this camera and I'm doing this through the sequencer. So I have my cameras in my sequencer and I can just click on these to go back and forth or out to go back to my normal default view. I'm gonna give myself just a little bit more room. 
spacebar to cycle between your gizmos. And just giving myself a little bit more room to work with. Oh. Awesome. So these lights in the foreground are a little much. So what I can do is actually just select these ones and get rid of them. And maybe before I blank it, just get rid of them. I will turn them off. See what it looks like. Yeah, much better. Much better. The scene is way more focused on what's important. And I'll mess with the lighting. Like I'm gonna come back and tweak the lighting. We're Again, we're just trying to get to that 80% mark. I'm trying to get something usable as quick as possible. All right, find our sequencer again. Yeah, it's a little dark on the edges now, but we, you know, we can get in there and tweak all day. Yeah, that looks awesome. Oh, I forgot our our uh, our grime. Our grime is lost here. Gotta get it back. And for this, I want to be able to see right. So I'm gonna go to lit and uncheck game settings and crank the EV here. All right, and we'll just line this up again. And I don't think we're releasing beyond that, so I think we're good. Dang, that was perfect. Mm. Post process volume, get out. I don't need to see it. Yes. Beautiful. It's all about this ground right here. Uh, this ground, it being wet, adds so much. So let's, let's find it by clicking the asset, making sure we're not searching for anything. We'll find the material and we'll search for it. Let's open this up. And let's go ahead and shrink it down. So point, I'm at 0 0.5, let's try 0 0.35. Oh no, I lied. I'm scaling it up. Let's go 0.75. You can see the tiling. Or wait, can you? I can't even tell. Never mind, I don't think you can. Um, 
We'll offset the Y. Yeah, that looks sweet. There we go. Now, um, of course, we're gonna mess with the roughness if you want to make it look not as wet or untoggle the specular wet and the specular and the roughness wet. And this is kind of what we get, but it looks better with like the puddle maps in there. So I'm gonna toggle those on and maybe just take my roughness intensity down a bit, take my specular intensity down a bit. And this is all the fine tune, this is just fine tuned city. This is no reflection at all. Looks like a carpet. Disgusting. But even a little bit. That's 0.1 specular. 0.1. I like me a good bit of it. I think that looks great. There's going to be cables and carts kind of all around here. I'll mess with the lighting. I think we need a little bit more light out to the sides of the room. These are our two looks right here. I was looking in the wrong view. This is, I mean, I can make it whatever I want, honestly. So we can, you know, we can push it back a little bit more. We want to like start it here. I'm feeling like it'll start like way out here, you know? And it'll like, as the, the intro starts and I have the text on screen that says like, you know, all the artists, how many submissions, and it's doing a slow dolly in, and it's probably blurred out. It'd probably be something like, let's see, if we set the focus settings to, to manual, and we took the focus plane like really close, Or really, I would just slide this thing all the way up. So you can actually see the focus plane and move it forward and back. And it's cool because it actually interacts with your environment. But I'd bring it like all the way close, essentially. And it would start like this as we dolly in. And as we get closer and closer and closer and closer, you know, you would start to eventually get to this point where it's in focus, everything starts to come into focus. Yeah. This can be awesome. But for now, we can keep tracking that mannequin. Ah. <sighs> Time is it? How long we've been going? Two twelve. I can go a little bit more. Go a little bit more. Cause I'm really enjoying myself today. This is a good. This is a good stream.
And I'll really have to get detailed here with these pillars, but that's the idea. They'll go out to the side there. Oh, the ceiling. Yeah, let's get that, um, let's get that freaking whatchamacallit. Um, easy Sonics. I ain't ignoring Super Chats, buddy. Not on purpose. I feel like I've hit every single one. What you talking about, son? Calling me out like that? That ain't even true. Did I miss, did I miss a super chat? Y'all. Y'all. Must have been way back. Man, you got me scrounging through these chats here. I see you. Easy Sonics, I see ya. Am I gonna stream my work in C4D as well? Um, I'm gonna stream, depending what I'm doing on the day, how far I've gotten, I will stream my work in whatever program I'm in at the time. It just happens to be all unreal at this time. Once I get through my streams, right, I'm gonna do four streams, and hopefully by the fourth stream, I'm like done, and I'm just in DaVinci or After Effects tweaking color correction and all that good stuff. And then we have the Judgment Day stream. We got the montages. Um, and then we have the winner stream. But also coming down the pipe, the pipe or the pike? I think it's the pike. Coming down the pike, we got um, my art breakdown. I'm gonna break down all of this, my whole process on what I'm doing here um, and what I will be doing in a very bite-sized probably 20 minute video um, because I don't expect everyone to go through all these streams, especially since they're not like the last streams I've done where I finished the art before the stream and I just shotgun blast y'all through the entire process in like an hour and a half to two. This is way more me just experimenting and figuring things out on the fly like you're seeing me do right here, which I think is cool. I think it's fun. All right, let's get the ceiling, the roofing. So let's hop into that Quixel bridge. See you later, Julio. Thanks for stopping by. I'll probably get the ceiling done, we can call it. At least the material on the ceiling. So let's look for surfaces. And uh, what would this even be? Roofing or ceiling? Um, I know the exact like material that I'm going for. Uh, it's a chrome material. And it's kind of crinkly. Maybe this tarp. I might just grab this tarp. Let's bring it over and see what we can do. This might be a thing that I actually simulate in C4D, like a cloth sim, and droop it down so they're all kind of bubbly. Let's go ahead and add this. Scan surface. Tarp. Sweet. Okay. Put this tarp on the ceiling. So let's adjust this a little bit, shall we? Tiling, two and two, maybe three and three, perhaps? Doesn't look bad. And then what I'm gonna do is actually make it metallic. So metallic override, base metallic will set to one. 
I actually don't need the albedo. Hmm. How am I gonna do this? Metallic is set to one. Our specular should be set to one. Our roughness should be set to like 0.2. I mean, that's close. Kind of hard to see. Um, maybe... The metallic isn't coming through. Let's get our brightness up. Eric, yo, what's up? You never got that scan of Nick's head. All good though, lots of love from your maniac, Rico. Yeah, yeah. I thought, uh, I didn't want to ask Nick to photo scan his head and give it to some dude on the internet, so. <laughs> but I appreciate the super chat very much um, and, and for the love and the support. I just don't think Nick's head Nick's 3D head is yours for the taking. So I appreciate your understanding. Uh, let's get all of these cylinders in place. Control Shift G will regroup them. And let's go ahead and bring it over to their side. And we'll duplicate it again. Have it be on top. And a couple more times over. I wish there was an easy way to select stuff in Unreal. I really do. I also wish there was an easy way to duplicate things in Unreal. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Um, let's grab all of these. Bring them back. I wish there was an easier way. Uh, 
Nice. Yeah, that doesn't look good. I will fix it later. Later, I say. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Default. I needed snapping in my life. Where it was snapping when I needed it. Sweet. Let's get these guys drug out. Come on. It's because of this uh this camera distortion. It's not, it's not actually letting me click what I'm trying to click. I'm being fooled. Let's see. Materials, post-process material, lens distortion, instance. I'll just take it from 0.075 to zero. There we go. Awesome, awesome. I think what I need are some actual lights in here. Because emissives, like, eh. I feel like they don't do the best job at lighting your scene. It's gonna look a lot better, a lot cleaner with these. proper <sighs> tactile file what's going on congrats on the million subs thank you very much uh, you've come a long way since the Freddy W days. Oh my goodness, yes I have. It has been a long time since the Freddy W days. 
Those were the beginning, the beginning days. And it's been awesome seeing your growth through the years. Keep at it. Thank you so much. Thank you for the support. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with us. Making some 3D art together, man. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I really appreciate that, man. Freddie, let me, uh, man, Freddie. Freddie is quite the guy. Um, he not only was the person to invite me out to LA and do VFX with him and film cool videos with him, he allowed me to pay really cheap rent. Um, he is the one who kind of reintroduced me and my wife, now my wife, um, and convinced me to like follow up with her and like, cause I was a very shy person. Let me tell you that I was a very, very shy man with the ladies. And Freddie, Freddie was like the person I needed who was like, dude, what are you doing? You're crazy. She likes you. Talk to her. That's what I needed to hear. I was a terrified young little man back in those days. So he did that. Virtual shadow map page pool overflow detected. Interesting. I have no idea what that means. What else did Freddy do? I mean, he gave me a job. I learned so much from him as well as from Sam and Nico. Yeah, lots of, lots of good people in my life. I cannot complain. I definitely would not be where I am today if it weren't for those guys. All right, so let's look at the difference. These are our, uh, Light box lights. And let's put them in, I guess we'll put them in screens because technically go in screens. And let's, hmm. Let's hop into this view. Let's turn off those lights and see what happens. So immediately we're seeing a lot more detail in our character and on this chair. All right, we can actually see what's going on now. And I can't wait because once I build out my 3D environment, the one on the rooftops, right? This one, once I build this out, and we dolly in to this shot here, these screens are gonna flicker on all across. And the character will now be in this environment. And then now when it cuts to all the other renders, everyone's gonna know it's just a character in this landscape and this like going on this VR adventure, I guess. Kind of what I'm getting at, so. I think it's a cool idea, I wanted to do something that justified all the other renders in this montage. So, guys, I think uh, it's time for me to get some food here. Before I leave, before you guys go, um, I want to talk about a couple things just for like announcements and news and whatnot. So, um, the Discord server, if you're not in the Discord server, at this point definitely do so because that's where all of the rules and FAQs and and things go on for this challenge that's where they're at um you don't want to miss these like stage chats they're like town hall meetings that we have um and we do them every monday at what time do we do them at soto 11 o'clock 11 a.m. PST. I think that's the last time we, we did it last time. It'll be in the Discord server. It'll be in the events. So don't miss yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know the time for, for you. In Spain, I know the time, but I don't know if that's helpful. I'm going to send the link. They'll, they'll just click and, and it'll tell you guys the time. 
and that way you also join the discord if you haven't yeah so we we like get your guys's feedback we look at your art we're gonna be looking at your art and your progress how you're coming along in the challenge next monday this upcoming monday um and talking to you about any of the problems that you're going through and you know we'll just bring people up and we'll have a good chat with the community um what else what else um yeah i'll be back next saturday hopefully way further along in this scene kind of walk you through what i've done and keep cranking at it um the kit bash kit bash exclusive discount code it's up in the description or in the description it's pinned in the chat right at the moment um there's only 50 codes so if you guys want to hop in there and and uh get yourself 20 percent off on anything on kitbash um they're doing these exclusively for these streams for this challenge it's pretty sweet um and their assets are definitely going to help me create my rooftop scene when the time comes um, anything else, Soto? Can you think of anything, Soto? Um, I don't know. Thank you for watching. <laughs> That's about it, huh? <laughs> yeah. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, it's been a good time. I'm gonna get some food. And then I'll probably keep doing some VFX. <laughs> but I'll see you guys soon. Keep learning, keep growing, keep creating, and have fun with this challenge, all right? I will see y'all next week. Peace out. Later.